guys, it's me, Nicola Diggins with Green Mike here. Welcome to my channel, welcome back to my channel, whichever the case may be. So, I have a slight confession to make. <laughs> Just a slight one. I actually have uh, filmed this particular segment once before, <laughs> and it wasn't because it was a hard thing, but what ended up happening was I ate an edible, like, an hour and a half before I started filming, and you could completely see how I, you know, that whole decline, um, you could see it. You could just totally see it. And the more and more I looked at it, I'm like, I cannot put that on the online. That's just no. So I decided we're going to go ahead and refilm it. It's going to follow along with the same stuff that's when my computer is open so that I can make sure to touch on the things, the items that we did before because it works so well. Only I was like... Wow, uh, let me tell you what guys, it was insane. I was so high that my eyes were like, it was so bad. So, um, over the last several days, I was trying to find a good solution to the torch because the torch is so freaking loud. So we have this, we have the electric email. Hopefully it's ready to hit. This is actually really kind of cool. You press this button, and it starts getting hot, it comes down here, it goes into your bong, and this is where all the concentrate goes. When you want to clear your your bong, you would hit that button. So it's actually really, really simple. Um, and I thought, you know something, maybe that'll make life a little bit easier on us when I am trying to do a review and you can't hear me. So, guys, if, uh, if I could get you to hit that subscribe button to join the Lady Family here on YouTube, I would be greatly appreciated. We are uh, skipped by the YouTube algorithm because we are medical cannabis and uh, yeah, you know, you, you know YouTube. Um, so please hit that, that subscribe button. Please nail that share and like button. It really does help me out with the YouTube algor algorithm. <laughs> okay, so let's do this. Again, like I said, I did have this filmed once before. It just, it, it just looked bad. So, uh, we stopped at um, exploring meditation. Should I meditate? How long should I meditate for? Is there an app for that? And of course there is, there's an app for freaking everything. <laughs> so now we're gonna move to the rearrange your room. You might be surprised at how much a simple change in, change in surroundings can improve. Um, okay, I just like can't read today. Um, you might be surprised at how much a simple change in your surroundings can inspire your own inner changes and personal growth. It is a means of self-expression as well as a productive way to release any worries you might be facing at the moment. Plus, it's just fun. Um, in this exercise, you're going to rearrange a space in your home. It could be your living room, your bedroom, workspace, whatever. And use the following section to write out any materials you may need, such as paint, new furniture, organizational items. So that is what we are working on right now. Actually, let's we'll, we'll open them up. It also gives you a little graph chart here. So that if you want to, you know, go to town and make it, you know, like the, the shit, you can. Okay, so make an anti-worry playlist. Music, music is a powerful tool for rebuffing worries and regulating emotional responses to those worries. In fact, research has shown that music and mood 
are closely correlated, which explains why those slow, sad songs encourage gloomy feelings, while faster paced, upbeat tunes make you happier. Create a playlist of all the songs that make you happy, so whenever you're feeling stressed or upset, you can simply hit play and leave your worries behind. So, um, my anti-worry playlist, a lot of this is, is, I don't know, some of it's sad, some of it's not, it's just something that gets me up and gets me moving, so, Lips of an Angel by Hinder, Don't Let Me Be Yours by Zara Larson, A Little Bit Off by Five Finger Death Punch, Karate by Anne Marie, Withdraw Withdrawals from Tom McDonald, Popular Monster from Falling in Reverse, the Search from NF, uh, You Can't Stop the Girl by B.B. Rexa, Graveyard by Halsey, Snowflakes by Tom McDonald, Dear Alcohol by Dax, Boy by Anne Marie, and Ocean Eyes by Billie Eilish. So those are some of the ones that I really like. I went in ahead and I put um, a math playlist together just because I know when I get really irritated and really mad, these songs kind of help bring me back down more than the others. And I do, I actually have them set, uh, set up as playlists in, in, my, in my phone so that I know how to, what I want to listen to. So the Mad Playlist is Lose You to Love Me by Selena Gomez, Love the Way You Lie by Rihanna and Eminem, Breaking Glass by Limp Bizkit, Thunder by Imagine Dragons, No Good Bastards by Tom McDonald, Brandon Hart, and Nova Rockefeller, Hate Goes On by Jelly Roll, God We Need You Now by Struggle, You Should Be Sad by Halsey, Did Your Best by Nova Rockefeller, Bad Guy by Billie Eilish, Chop Suey from System of a Down, and Toxicity from System of a Down. So a lot of times I'll get into my, you know, especially with this playlist, I'll get into whatever I'm working on, whether it's cactuses, cleaning house, any of these things, maybe even sitting here coloring. I can put that list in and I can dance, or I can dance and sing to it because I'm really, I, I bebop around this trailer every day, just the way it is. Thank God nobody can see me because I can't dance. I am a white woman. <laughs> so, um, give yourself a hand. Sometimes your worries can be linked to feelings of lack of self-worth. And when you're in this period of doubting yourself, it's easy to forget all the great accomplishments you've had in the past. In this activity, you're to list everything you've done lately in the cup. It can be as simple as going to work when you really wanted to call in sick. You're doing so much better and more. Um, then you realize it's time to own those wins. Everything I've kicked butt at lately. So, I forgot. There is the uh, controller. Controllers. So, um, I've actually run into this particular exercise a couple other times. It is a really good exercise at times because people, I mean, I don't know. I, I can hardly ever remember what the hell I've done. There will be times that I'm talking to my husband and he's like, I know up there. I'm like, oh yeah. And it's like, I forget all these things. One of, one of my um, many work accomplishments is, and it's that weird, but you know those uh, blood pressure machines that are in like your grocery stores or Walmart or anything like that that you put your arm in and it takes your blood pressure. I built those. <laughs> I did. Crazy sound, um, crazy, crazy. I did not build the first model. So what happened was I was working with my own company and I was building those kiosks for, cause they were upgrading them and they wanted this new program information in there. But every time you turn around, there was a glitch in the matrix, if you want to call it. So I would have to go through uh, each line by a code and make sure it's correct. Make sure there isn't something going on. And oh my God, it took me like six months every time I, I showed an issue, they would fix it and something else would be a problem. So it was it was this huge thing. But we did finally get it done. Um, I want to say there are 1,500 of those units around now. So that's kind of cool. Just, you know, just a, a weird thing. 
So, um, let's see. Mine would be, I was able to start weaning myself off some of my medications. Um, I take about 10 different, 10 different medications every day. Um, and normally I take them three times a day. And they're really close, if not similar. Like my more, or no, my nap time meds and my bedtime meds are pretty close. My morning meds are a little, little different. So each time I have to go through and figure out where I'm at. Well, I kind of started to wake up lately, which is kind of cool, very nice. And I've been able to almost eliminate that noon time, that third set of pills. So I'm only taking in the morning and at night. Um, and I'm finding that that's nice. It's, it's helpful, it's relaxing to be able to do that finally. I haven't been able to do that in a long time. Um, so yeah, um, I'm, I, that third set of pills is, I call it a flow, room, flow chart now. And if there's some place in there, as long as it's within five, there was a five hour break between them, I could take that other set. So, or one or two or whatever, how it works. So, um, I've been keeping a daily journal now for 14 weeks. I, I, I gotta say, it's not something I do very often, but yeah, I, I've just been, you know, trying to do mental health stuff and, and get myself going and feeling better. So yeah, I've got 14 weeks of this, which is kind of nice now I can kind of reflect on what's going on. Also, it helps me remember some of the stupid shit that I forget. And there's a lot, let me tell you. I just, I mean, chemo and radiation. I only did three doses of radiation, but chemo fucked me up memory-wise. Um, the radiation is what ultimately got my, my, took my bladder. So the, I ended up with a, a disease called interstitial cystitis. I know, so that's intense that. Um, that particular disease, causes hardening of the bladder wall, basically. Um, it's very painful, you'll get uh, cramping. I was cramping so much. Um, the urethra stopped working. My urethra stopped working um, close to 10 years ago. So I've had to catheterize to go to the bathroom mm, for a majority of that. And it sucked. Uh, two years of it I had what they call the super pube catheter basically they cut me open and they put a tube in and cut my bladder open and put a tube in um so I go to the bathroom a little bit easier without having to catheterize myself because when you're catheterizing yourself up to 17 times a day you are in complete hell so uh that being said now that the surgery and stuff is done I feel so much better but I still have some of those issues um, okay. I made almost two weeks without coffee. Yeah, that, that, now that's a feat. Because I can drink coffee in the morning and I can drink coffee at bedtime and it won't bother me. I can, the caffeine actually helps calm me down to, to get me to sleep. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then this is week two of No More Worries and the anti, and week seven of the anti-anxiety book worries which I am pretty happy about. Um, a lot of times I wouldn't find the way to keep it going or I'd hem and haw and, and put it off. But with you guys, with your help, I've been able to get this, this going and keep it up. So I, I, I believe that we have a, a hand for that. Alrighty, let's do this one more time. So as always, fuck cancer, fuck anxiety, fuck depression, fuck COVID. In with the good and out with the bad. Hmm. I'm thinking it's time for a book. Basically, this top comes off. This 
pop comes off. You push that white button and you'll see. So I thought that was pretty nifty. One thing I have noticed with this email, I really do like it, but if you overfill the email, it all comes out through the cap. So, don't overfill it. anxiety, fuck depression, in with the good and out with the bad. one of these 10 things to do instead. Ah, spiraling. It can start with one little thought, then suddenly your mind starts spinning until you're totally overwhelmed. Relatable, am you right? Sometimes the best way to short circuit this spiral is by doing something else. Uh, the following are simple things you can do um, right this second to bring yourself out of your own mind and back into the present moment. Uh, go for a walk, take in the scenery, breathe in the fresh air, and look for the beauty that is truly everywhere. Number two, call or text your best friend and ask them about their day. Take the focus off yourself and put it on someone else. Number three, do one thing that you've been putting off for like ever. <laughs> I love the freaking little extra in here. It's kind of funny. Watch your favorite te uh, feel-good TV show. Number five, take a 20-minute nap. Seriously, sometimes you just need to be a kid again and lie down for a hot second. Yes, I do, every single day. <laughs> uh, teach yourself a new skill. Meditate for five to ten minutes. Watch an inspiring TED Talk. Oh, I don't know. Um, TED Talks these days are... Uh, I, w I find myself with TED Talks either disagreeing and, and getting mad or getting hyped up because it's right. going like crazy on watching my stuff out there just already so um yeah i'm kind of i don't know what do you guys think would you think that a ted talk would be something to help you out of that spiral or do you think you would like combine and uh, compile those together and now you're upset with with whatever it was on the ted talk um 
and, and, and upset with, you know, the spiral that you're going down with whatever that happened. So I'm kind of curious what you guys think. Bernie Brown has an excellent talk called The Power of Vulnerability. Yeah, see that one I would have probably some issue with purely because I keep my vulnerability hidden. Um, my past is horrible and if I don't keep that hidden, then I would do nothing but cry all day. So yeah, I, I probably don't know about that. <laughs> uh, go to the gym, you don't have to go crazy, just get moving. Now, I am personally a um, advocate of the gym is nothing but a meat market. Um, I say this because if you're going to the gym and meeting people and going out with them, it's usually a little bit, I don't know, it can go two ways. You can both turn into major exercise freaks that have to exercise 12 hours a day. Or you just turn into an ass because you're in and out of there and you just don't care anymore. And, and I've seen it. It's just, I don't care for the gym. Um, it, it's not about being you. It's about trying to be this other thing and, and we all wear our masks and that's one of those places that you do wear a mask. So yeah, I'm, I wouldn't do that on the gym. So, okay. Now it's your turn. In the tornado, write out your own ideas for things to do besides spiraling. So I have, uh, number one, working with the wood. Um, I love sitting there sanding the wood, making it look nice, painting it, and doing all that stuff. Um, I'm doing it with this spoil cactus right now, and then I want to set it in a um, resin base with, I don't know, some frost or whatever. Um, so, I mean, you know, I have big aspirations for what I can do. I just haven't, it's, we're in Arizona, it's 100 freaking degrees outside right now, and it's not going to cool down anytime soon. So, um, yeah, when I'm up in Flagstaff or up north or something, then I'll, I'll pull the wood, I'll bring the wood out. But, right now, being in Wickenburg, uh, yeah, no. Uh, music and walking with the dogs. Um, this one does get a little bit trickier because they have to get out, but we're in Arizona. You don't want to get them out into that hot, hot cement and stuff. So um, we go off pretty much when the sun when it, the sun rises, and I'll take them out to the river bottom and, and let them run and play, and then they just lay there and ignore me for the rest of the day. <laughs> So we do it really, really early, and it is fun, and you, I just have to be careful because we'll start walking, and Raffi will keep going and keep going until he's like, I'm going home, and you will. He will turn around and walk home. Um, it's funny as hell, and he will not listen. He will not. He'll, he'll wait. I, he, he can always see me. He's not going anywhere out of my view, but he's still walking further ahead. I'm like, you're an ass. Uh, cleaning, uh, cleaning does a lot for me. I can relax when I'm cleaning. I can jump up and down when I'm cleaning. I, I do all kinds of things. The other day, I was cleaning in here, and I was going to pick up the stool and take it outside, but I was right about you know right here, and I, I don't know. It just hit a really slippery spot on the top on the linoleum. And I went down, but I went down really, I, I kind of went down slowly and I was able to kind of grab myself a little bit, but take her in there, come hauling butt into the living room. And by the time my head got to the floor, he was underneath it, which I'm like, oh wow, that's really cool. He's never been taught to do that. So I don't know, it's just, that was cool. So I thought I'd share it. <laughs> uh, color your way to calm. This is the mandala. Color your worries away with this one mandala. Okay. I keep all of these in the book. I have, I don't write in the book, 
That way, maybe at the end of the each one, I can do a giveaway and send it out to some of you. Um, so, sip some tea. Mindfulness is any practice that brings your focus to the present moment. In turning your awareness, awareness to the present, you are shifting it away from any worries about the past or future that might be troubling you. In this activity, you will use the practice of mindful drinking tea or coffee, if that's more your thing, to pull your mind away from worry and back to here and now. Grounding your thoughts with easy exercises will allow you to let go of perceptions and speculations that are not serving you well. So, instructions. Sit down with a cup of tea or coffee, hold the cup in your hands, and take note of how it feels, what the texture of the cup is, how does the warmth feel against your palms. Take a small sip once it, once it is cool enough, but don't swallow just yet. Feel the texture of the flavor of the beverage in your mouth. Now swallow and pay attention as it a liquid moves down your throat and into your stomach. Really experience the sensations of warmth. Continue mindful, enjoy your drink. Oh, continue mindfully enjoy your drink. So, um, I do this kind of in the morning when I'm having my cup of coffee or cup of tea. I'll either sit outside if it's nice because we do have beautiful mornings here and I'll drink some tea and I, I do that as it is. Uh, recently I have not wanted to go outside however because there's people out there. It's too people-y. Um, and by that I mean we have several new people that have come in around us and it's too people-y. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I suffer from a wonderful thing called agoraphobia, which means um, I'm, a scared, I'm, I, I'm afraid of people and I'm afraid to leave my home. I don't want nothing to do with it. Um, I can leave with my husband. If my husband is with me, we can go anywhere and do just about anything um, as long as I'm psyched up for it first. So let's say we're going. Um, Let's say we're going to a, a family thing, uh, one of the, the grandbabies' birthdays, and uh, the exes are there. <laughs> um, that's too many people. I can't. It just, um, I can't. I, I can't. It just, I do not. I can't tell you. <laughs> um, it makes me nervous. It makes me freak out. It makes me like this, where I'm like, no. Um, my rings, uh, kind of funny thing is, my rings are a, an anxiety thing for me, depending on my, how I am. I'll sit and play with them or do anything, and it's more me being nervous because um, something's going on around me. So it's like we're at the grocery store, or we have neighbors that just come out. Yeah, oh my goodness. Neighbors that will sit there up into your area, try waving and wanting to come out. I'm like, oh my god, are you kidding me? So yeah, uh, just doesn't want to ask the question. So yeah, it's very interesting at these types of places. Um, this is the off season here, so I thought it would be a little lighter on people, but it's not bad. I mean, because like the person on this side of me, they're they're gone for the summer, and then the person on this side of me is gone for the summer. Um, their trailers stay there because I guess they're year-round tenants, I guess. I, I don't know. But their trailers still stay in the spot. They just go to a cooler place during the summertime. Usually, they're snowbirds. Okay. Mm. Okay, let's try this again. Guys, don't forget to hit that. That's that, that subscribe button. <laughs> Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. I really could use your help, so I do appreciate it. So let's see what we're going to do today.
see if I get a little less nervous. <laughs> oh, it, it's really perfumey. And it burns my nose. <laughs> And I'm sorry for the wonderful teeth issue. I had all my teeth pulled because they were bad, really bad. Um, the ones I left. And I'm waiting to get the um, implants in, so I I slur a lot and I do apologize. <laughs> oh. Find your it's okay reminders. What is an it's okay reminder? Glad you asked. Essentially, it's a positive affirmation that helps you combat negative thoughts and emotions and feel more optimistic in your path to less worry. These statements are reminders that you are more than capable of handing any obstacles life may throw your way. Um, everything really will be okay, no matter how much you may, may have been worrying that it won't be. Kind of a weird sentence. These statements are reminders that you are more capable of handling any obstacles life may throw your way, that everything really will be okay, no matter how much you may have been worrying about it. Okay. Uh, the following, following are some great it's okay reminders to try out. Discover which ones resonate the most with you and make sure they are never out of sight. You can make them your smartphone background, you can put them in a note on your phone, take them to your bathroom mirror, whatever you will see, wherever you will see them often. This way, when worry strikes, you're able to turn to these truths for comfort and grounding. Um, okay, so they have, I'm okay, I always have been, I always will be. I am more than I am more than capable of figuring this out. Yes, this sucks and will be difficult, but growth is often born from hardship. I am enough. Life is tough, but so am I. So we do. Oh, your turn. Uh, write your own personalized reminders that will help you keep worry away. Um, I got this. Keep fucking going. I am enough. It's okay, you're safe now. <laughs> Just keep swimming. And <laughs> Joe, this is kind of funny. I uh, I owned at daycare when, when my kids were little. And when that movie, um, I can't remember the name of the movie, um, with, with Dory and, and the fishes. Oh my god, I can't think of the name of Nemo. Oh my god. <laughs> um, and I kept calling her, I don't remember the name of the little turtle that California surfer. And she called me Dory. So, um, and it was always just keep swimming and it was our way, you know, she yelled Dory at me, let's say we were doing something and I'm getting irritated. I had that reminder to, to change it because just keep swimming. And that was something that we did. It was, um, I don't know, it was just fun. I am not perfect. I make mistakes. However, I grow and do my best and learn from my mistakes. Okay, that is where we will end today. So that is where we're ending today. We are going to be starting back up on page 24 for the next 43 Wednesday. Um, talking about tracking your vocation and then a ticket for a worry free day so yay uh, let's try this one more time as, as, hit that subscribe guys come on hit it hit it right there thumbs up no you know what to do you, you know your job let's do this
So, funny story for you. I, I owned a daycare for many years. Um, and it was always me, Nana, um, and a, a uh, one of my girlfriends. So we had we had a lot of fun because we were able, you know, to, to clown around and, and be big kids. Well, um, when that movie Nemo, oh wait, not that. I'm sorry. Uh, um, she, if, so let's call her T, and I would we would be out in the back patio. Well, the bees would come during certain times of the year, and it would just drive me insane. Well, because I'm allergic. Um, she, however, started to, you know, do karate that she'd never known in order to try to get the bee away. But the funniest story, we were all sitting outside on the, on the picnic table. I actually smoked back then, which is bad. Uh, I, it wasn't marijuana, it was cigarettes. And this little field mouse came running up the freaking patio and behind this shelf thing that we had sitting there. We got a, uh, I barely got a glimpse of it when Nana and T jumped on the table and started screaming because of this little field mouse. Well, we, <laughs> oh my god. So I finally get them to cal calm down and get off the damn table. Uh, T ran inside. She wouldn't have nothing to do with that. And Nana, bless her heart, was trying to help me shoo the, the field mouse around the, the, the case, the, the shelf that it was right there. And out of the corner of my eye, I see the back of the shelf, this little field mouse comes up. I mean, stare eye to eye. <laughs> Nana screamed. I thought she was gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> oh my god. Um, yeah, and flung this mouse. I, I don't even know where the mouse ended up because she flung it. I know it went over the back wall and into the neighbor's yard, but after that, I have no idea. However, soon after that, we found out that the neighbor right behind us, or we had so many issues with them, they were harvesting bees some of their crap. Um, so, I mean, it got to the point to where I got stung, I started going into anaphylaxis, and the fire department had to come out with the ambulance, and they're like, what the hell? I told them. They went out in the backyard, and they're like, holy shit, and one of the firemen jumped the fence, because they're allowed to do that, and, and they had these baskets that would hang from, you know, the patio, so you could walk around these baskets of flowers were stacked honeycomb where these bees were. And they ended up having to have um, special people come out because they, they were so bad. I was like, holy shit. So yeah, be careful with the bees. I don't know how I got to that point, but okay. So as always guys, thank you for joining me. I most certainly appreciate it. Um, I will be redoing the intro. I like it. It's too long. It's way too long. So I've been looking at other intro things, so bear with me and I will get a new intro and outro up now that I've, you know, done a little bit more research. <laughs> I'm trying. I swear. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. Mad love. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Why are you limping?